How do you talk about books without spoiling them? I know. Or movies or whatever. And I was so into it. I couldn't even like take my eyes off the book to look at the view. I love the peer pressure yeah, that yeah. this group brings. Yeah. I loved it, but it was hard for me to read. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a very special episode of What Women Binge, the book club edition. Tiny book club. Tiny, Tiny book club. <laughs> That's what we call ourselves. So we've got, of course, me and Amanda. But here is Angela Lanter. You guys might remember with her husband, Matt, came on an episode. And one of our dear friends, Brooke, is here. <laughs> and she's my neighbor and one of our friends. And so we do Tiny Book Club. Tiny and book this, club. Is our, this is our Tiny Book Club. So we have so many books to cover because... We don't we see each other. Hang out with each other. <laughs> so we, we read a lot. We send each, lo- each other a lot of text messages, right? About like, what book should we be reading? What have you read? What have you? And you two are like insane readers. She's more than me. I don't think that's true. And all this got started basically because you two were talking about how much you loved books, and she was like, "I'm an avid reader. Here's my list." And then I got brought in, and I loved it. And I know, but I've read. gotten books because yeah. of you. Yeah, like um, the, what the Dolly the Dolly part moment? Oh, so I haven't finished good. it yet, Very but good. yeah, run yeah. Rose run, run, run Rose, Rose run. run. That's it. Very oh, good. Yes. Wait, did I miss this text? <laughs> what, maybe. No, we were at lunch. No, no, no. We, we were went at lunch, lunch and she oh. remember she had her bag full of books. Yes, and there's like a stack like this, and I'm like. Okay, I need that one. I need that one. I need. She that reads one. like a book a day. Reads them. You don't audiobook them. Either. No, I don't. I can't audiobook. Are you them. a speed reader? I am. Okay, well then that's that not makes fair. a lot of sense. <laughs> it's insane. How, how how often are you reading? Um, I think about a, a book a month. I mean, a week. A yeah. week. Yeah, I usually oh, you get about five in a month. I'm yeah. I'm I'm slow, you guys. I mean, I have to have a book club in order to read. Like it makes me have a deadline. I love the peer pressure. Yeah, that yeah. this group brings. Yeah. Makes me yeah, very but you, happy. You both physically read. Brooke and I listen to our books. Yes. We're, we're I mix it up. Okay. I, I switch it up. Yeah. So I, I like, like the experience of holding the book, especially yeah. a book that's like designed to be held, like this yes. one specifically. The Addie LaRue. The hardest. Yes. The hard book. All right. And this yeah, let's is talk a about our book. Special edition. And it's got the yummy bookmark. Wait, you got to introduce it properly, though, Amanda. Introduce your book that you're most oh, excited about. Oh, I'm going about. first. You go. Okay. Let's do this. So, this I would say is my like number one book. So far, I know you this love year. this. I mean, it came out before of this all year. time, or just of like our reads. Uh, of our reads so far. Okay, but you also you've said on the podcast that this is your this favorite. This is book a top of all. ten. This is what you would tell everybody. Oh, really? I feel like this book blew my mind, and so few books blow my mind because everything has been done at some point. Yeah. Every story has been told, and I was surprised by this one. And especially someone who loves time travel and all of those things, I felt like I, it had all been done before. And this, I don't know. It's just super interesting. It's so interesting. It's well written. It's got it's a, a beautiful great cover. Twist. It's, <laughs> mm, it oh. is. And y'all just holding this book. I'm just telling you. So this is I did this one on audio book, and I'm say the but her voice drove me nuts. Mm-hmm. Okay, I hate to say that. Whoever you are out there, love you. She did great accents. This is I feel like the majority of read them. Do you want to introduce it? <gasps> What's it called? The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V. E. Schwab. Schwab. So good. Schwab. Do you I know if they... this author has written other books? I don't know. Let's look. Because I typically the... do that. Like, if I love a book, I'm going to go and read every other book they wrote. Like, Kristen right. Hanna so is one of mine. Like, uh, I love Taylor Jenkins. We Reed. love Kristen Hanna. Uh, Taylor oh, Jenkins. Reed. Colleen, Colleen Hoover. Hoover. We love her. Yes. Taylor Jenkins Reads. So, this is my That's obsession. Great. So, yes. the book I want to talk about today mm-hmm. is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn LaRue, uh, Hugo, not LaRue. That's LaRue. LaRue. <laughs> Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reed. But oh I didn't God. realize, I literally finished this book and I was like, I want to go see this woman's movies. And then mm-hmm. I had to remind myself that it was fiction. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's so weird. I did that too with Daisy Jones and the Six. And then I realized it's the same writer. Yep. But wasn't there characters from Daisy Jones in that? Oh my gosh, are there? Well, Mick Riva's in that, which is from, um, what's her other book? Um, oh, Malibu, Malibu Rising. Rising. Yeah. Right. getting ready to come out on Hulu. Oh, is it? Yes. Wow. Yes. So this one's being made into a movie, which we're super excited about. And then she, so she has a new one coming it. out. She has what? Another new book coming out I read. Oh, yeah. I and think I, I, I think they it. all they all feed into each other, which I love. Oh, I didn't so we really I didn't place Mick Reva, but I, now that you say that, he, he was, was one of her dad. husbands. He was the dad in Malibu he's Rising. He's the dad of Malibu Rising. And then there's somebody from <sighs> Daisy Jones and the Six that's in that, but I haven't. that's the only one of hers I haven't read yet. It's really good. I know. It's it's on my. It's in my queue. I just haven't and gotten to it. And I would say yet. Daisy Jones and the Seven Husbands of, of Evelyn Hugo are great to listen to. Because like that's you said, there's Daisy some... Jones. Authors or some people who read that you just kind of don't click with their voice. Who reads it? Do you, is it like I don't know, but it was good. And there's more than one voice. There's the um, the writer's voice, 
And then there's Evelyn Hugo's voice. So yeah. it switches. And I like that. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. I would like that. Too. Well, Addie LaRue, I did like that she did great accents because she's mm-hmm. French. She's They're New York. There's guys, girls, all this. Um, they were just... She just took a lot of breaths or something. So I think it just like, <laughs> well, I was like, see, I down, speed mine up so much that I don't hear the breaths. I listen at like 1.5. Do you okay. listen to yours yeah. fast too? It depends on who the reader is. I think you yes. suggested that to me and that yeah. helped me get through. Because the beginning of this was a little slow for me, but then I loved it. I did love it. it I told me... you to stick through it. Because you, yeah, it, you definitely told us. To wasn't it slow at the beginning? It was. It was. And it's because it's based so far back in history. If you're not a history buff at all, it may not appeal at first. Well, why don't you give a little synopsis? So basically what happens, I feel like I'm going to spoil it. I know. I know. It's hard. But I, I know. Mean, like, I, how do you talk about books without spoiling them? I know. Or movies or whatever. So The Invisible Life, Fatty LaRue, basically follows the life of this, I think she's 23-year-old girl, Addie, who um, is in this small town in France and what was it, the 1600s? 1600s? Yeah, it's about a 300 yeah. year span of her. Right. Yeah. And so it, she's basically being forced to marry and she doesn't want to marry. And her escape from this is to, for lack of better words, kind of sell her soul to the devil. And it is her experience of immortality and her not being able to leave a mark on the world as her curse for this. So um, and it sh- brings you back to modern times and there's a it little flashes back and forth a lot. Yes. Which is interesting. Yes. Um, but it's everything she goes through in this invisible life and her struggles of like everyone forgets who you are. Um, the second you, you leave the room, the everyone second forgets yes. who you leave the room. Yeah. You can't um, purchase anything. You can't, can't make friends. friends. Yeah. Nobody remembers you. You can't stay in someone's house. She doesn't have a reflection either, does she? Yeah. And I make pictures. No, she can't be she can't photos. Photos. No photos. Yeah. She can see herself in the mirror. But she but can have people paint her. I so there is a yes. lot of really reference. interesting. Yeah. Her her showing up through art. Through yes. Yeah. That's yeah. how yeah. she made really her great. mark. Right. Yeah. And by influencing art throughout the generation. But she couldn't write and tell her story. So yeah, in this, the, all these historical references with the art, like doesn't she influence Beethoven? Is it Beethoven or I think it's Beethoven? Beethoven. Or, yeah. 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 So she influences his music, uh, and as Angela said, she actually watched Beethoven die. Oh, everybody dies that she... Well, no, 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 because he had also sold his soul. Oh, that's right. All the great artists sold their soul, right? right. So way, like, Luke was... took her to that. He, he like, whisked her up. Luke, Luke is short for Lucifer, Lucifer who is yeah. the devil. Devil. Who comes to haunt her sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I think that was the only part I had a really hard time with was, um, I don't know if we give too much away, but when she develops a relationship with Luke. It's really disturbing. Found, you know, it's she really sh- icky. Yeah, yeah, he's the one who put <laughs> her in the predicament. It's super disturbing. And, I think yeah. it's supposed to be, though. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. And I think it's, it's maybe- like getting in bed with the devil. It's, well, yeah. and when it's that love hate, that yeah. person who knows you exist. I think it's just trying her trying to grasp onto some form of like connection, connection, like identification. Some, yeah, someone knows who I am, mm-hmm. and. And, he, and he's the only person that keeps coming back in her life. She can't have anyone else in her life. She can't have her dad, who she's so adoring of. And she it's can't. The only yeah. She even loses, yeah. like, the, the only trinkets. person who knows who she is. Yeah. Like, the little wooden bird that she loses when yeah. she when they think she's dead. I thought it was v- super interesting, too, how in her mind she had the picture of the most beautiful man ever. And then that was Luke. And that's how he right. personified. Mm-hmm. I was confused by that. Vision. Listening to the book on tape, I missed that part. And it, so it was super confusing going forward until I kind of realized I didn't go. I should have gone back, but it's it's a 16 hour audio book. Yeah, it's really long. <laughs> it was a commitment. It was really I, it's long. A long I was yeah. glad when you told me to speed it up because I'm a fast yeah. reader, and this one took me three days. I'm glad you told three me to days. stick to it because I it sort of drug in the beginning and was a little dark, and I didn't know if I could stick to, with it. But it was really good. It was a little repetitive uh, on the audio book, at least. It was repetitive, and the fact that it was 16 hours, it. I can't believe you read it in three days because audio book wise, I yeah, it took yeah. me four weeks. This one, I <laughs> it took just, me about that too. I couldn't stop. I loved it. This is one that I had in my purse. I had it in my car. Anytime there was a minute to be reading it, I was reading it because I it just spoke to me. I don't know. And fun fact, I just found out about this author. She's from East Nashville. Oh, how oh, no. really? She lives oh, in Scotland right. now. Oh, I was going to say, we need to have her on. Maybe I know. she comes back home to visit. That would be so cool. Is that not crazy? Yeah. I had no idea. We got to so, read some more of her stuff. Wait, talk about the constellation on the cover. It's so, so pretty. super cool. So one of the first things you learn about Addie is that her freckles resemble a constellation. And that is kind of the one identifier she has as she's being captured through all these different artists' work throughout her life. If 
it, I guess it is a life, even though it was afterlife. 300 years. Yeah. Um, and so you see her freckles in the form of this constellation, and it's all throughout the book. And it's- and that's how people sort of recognize her, too, even though they, they don't know that they've ever met her, even though they do. Every time they every time she comes out of the bathroom, she has to reintroduce herself to people. Mm-hmm. It's sort of like 10 Second Tom in 50 First Dates, if you will. Yeah. Um, he has, she has to keep introducing herself to people, but they do sort of recognize, some of them recognize the constellation on her face as being famous artwork, right? Mm-hmm. Being like or familiar, a, but they can't place her. Yes. Yeah. yes. It's, a, it's a really cool little detail. When we went to lunch, the three of us, I don't, you couldn't make it for some reason, but you had this with you. Yes. And you had just gotten it and, and you were I, super excited. I think you had started it or something because she was like trying to get us. I still, yeah, yes. I was thinking. This I, was definitely your pick. You were the one who yes. initiated this. Yeah. And this one, so one of my good friends is an author and Anytime that I get stuck, I just call her. I'm like, hey, <laughs> what are we reading? And she recommended this. And oh, my gosh. So good. Please read this. Yeah. Everyone, please it's read It's very this. good. Well, going from the constellation, I'll talk about the book. Will you hand me that Wish You Were Here by Jodi Picoult? Oh, I have a lot of opinions about that. I'm going to talk about Wish You Were Here. So I was yeah, reading. Did you read this one, Brooke? Yes, I did. I'm it's the only really person who didn't read this one. It was confusing to me. I don't know why. I think it was one of those. I just picked it by the cover at the airport, needed a book. Yeah. And, um... I have to I, say, trigger warning for anyone who's not ready to read and relive some of the COVID pandemic, yes. pandemic shutdown. Lockdown. Yeah, I think yeah for sure. That if you don't know that that's what the story is about, yeah, it's current. You should know it's it. It's very yeah. current. Yeah, um, and in a way, I don't know. It reminds me of in five years in a way too. But mm-hmm. um, but wait, before I get into that, I have a gift for you guys. I forgot to give you. Oh. I brought you a little something back from um, Lake Tahoe from a little street fair. Fun. Um, oh. I brought back some really pretty oh, bookmarks made oh, out of leather you. that I love nice. And you guys can, love well, these. I kind of chose this one for you. Yeah. Live there colorfully. <laughs> and I don't know which one you guys want, but there's flowers and turn the page. Oh. Look yeah. yeah. how cute. You get turn the page and you get the flower. Well, I'm the gardener, it. so it makes sense. Oh, there you, there you go. go. Yeah. Good. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. That was very sweet. Yeah. I it almost looks needed... like Tennessee. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is like the shape of Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. It was just some uh, leather so um, uh, art oh, uh, trait, like a woman, yeah. an artist on the side of the road in uh, at a festival. So I just Very brought cute. you guys our book club little bookmarks. I love that. Well, Thank you. Yeah. And I like that they're not paper. They won't get ruined. That's They can like yes. they'll hold up. Like the one that's in the book there, my Costa Rica one in your hand, Angela. Oh, yeah. I'm so afraid that thing's going to snap. I bought that one in Costa Rica. It's wood. We and I think it's going to snap. Tore your page. Yeah. See? Oh, no. <laughs> not, not great. Not great. But anyway, back to Wish You Were Here. So this one, what... I was reading this, but listening to Addie LaRue and the constellation thing about her face, mm-hmm. the beginning of this, her father, they both also have a, a, a real love of their fathers that they lose. Mm-hmm. But um, her father is, um, what do you call it? Like renovating, recovering the restoring. ceiling, restoring, restoring yeah. Yeah. the ceiling of Grand Central and the constellation and um, and all the constellations that are on the ceiling of Grand Central. And, uh, and so I kept kind of. I don't know. There was a weird tie in there with the mm-hmm. two of them feeling similar. So I'd have to go back and forth and remind myself which one I was in. But this was, yeah, like you said, current New York City uh, woman has the perfect life. She's going to get engaged, go to Galapagos. Mm-hmm. And um, she is uh, ready to be engaged. You know, she thinks that her fiance is going to. Very boy, similar boyfriend's to in gonna, five years. Yeah. yeah. The plan. Yeah. Perfect plan. plan. Everything's by the nut. Everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to be married by this age. I'm supposed to have this and this and this. And he's a doctor. And mm-hmm. the pandemic comes and destroys their uh, their vacation, basically. Mm-hmm. He says, I can't go. I have to stay here in New York. And so his version of the whole story is very... Um, and also it has a big turn in the middle, like in five years. Mm-hmm. Um, but she goes to the Galapagos without him. He's sending... They can't keep in touch. There's no service. She's on the island. The ferries have shut down. There's no way home. And she's basically stranded there and has to find ways to eat and a family to befriend and things to do. And, um, and doesn't so speak the language, doesn't speak the language, mm-hmm. meets a little girl who's cutting herself, kind mm-hmm. of befriends the dad and the grandma. Like they all sort of she gets involved in this family that happens to be on the island. I, I loved it in a lot of ways. And then there were other things that really bothered me about it. It's a little simple and it's a little cop the out. ending. You didn't like the ending. Oh, my gosh. I've never been so angry. I wanted to throw the book across the room. Really? Like the very, very end? Like no, the last just like page? how it all turned out. The twist and then how it progressed towards the end. I I, I, I agree. I was a little bit like cop there was out. There no payoff. like a cop out. I yeah. thought it was different. Like you said with Addie LaRue, it's just not something you've read before. Mm-hmm. Such a turn in the middle of the story. So it feels like there's two separate stories. Yeah. Um, but, and then it, it leaves you guessing a lot at the end, which is frustrating. I would need, um, 
it, but it gave you a glimmer of hope right in the very very end but i need that glimmer of hope to either pay off or not pay off and this like you decide. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. You wrote the story. You tell me. Give me the happy ending. But tell see, me what happened. happened. Hold on. All the, what's weird is like, it seems like, and she's written a lot. Like, right, Jody has written a lot of books. Mm-hmm. And um, it seems like sometimes you think about the best TV shows on, on uh, that have been like long running TV shows. They never know how to end them. And they always end them with, it was a dream. Or actually, this is what happened. Like, Roseanne this did it. Game of Thrones how did I it. Like, everything. Mother. How I Met Your Mother did This is what that is. And it it's left so you. It is. It's the How yes. I Met Your Mother okay. ending. That's true. Do you, did you watch How I Met Your Mother? I've seen bits and pieces. Okay, of it. I've so never watched it. The finale of How I Met Your Mother is spoiler. Maybe the most disappointing television show Isn't that ever. Lost ever too, though? Yes. Yeah. But don't tell her that. Uh, uh, what? Hold on. Oh, sorry. I still have a few more seasons. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I've never watched Lock. Yes, Lock so. just joined the others. Yeah. Hold on. Everyone just talked about how infuriating the end is. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like that. The Game of Thrones. Everybody's always upset with the end, yes. but they do do a lot of cop outs. Like How I Met Your Mother. From the very first episode, you know who the mother should be, but she's not. Yeah. But then, so that's not the mother. But then somehow she also becomes the mother. Like it's it's it is. It's just it's one of the worst. I mean, that whole last season. It's oh, just it's so frustrating it with the disappointment. Like, but mainly, it never ended. paid off. Yeah, and, and you're that's right, how you're I felt right. with this. With, like I was here. so invested, and I thought. There was going. I, to be I don't even remember the ending. Hold some on. Some kind of life change, and then it never paid off. I feel like there's a lot of books like that. Yeah. Like if there's no payoff, then all of a sudden my five stars goes down to two, mm-hmm. and I'm just done. Yeah. You know. What do you think like, about in five she's years a 10. compared to this? So I just got no that. ending. Oh, that's right. Wait. <laughs> this is great to to bring up the whole the feelings that everyone felt when the lockdown hit, and, and I it think was, just it's just the first the, time I've the read topic, that was very relevant. And I thought all of that was handled so beautifully. Yeah. Like, and the way that she described what the hospitals were like in New York. And Ben's stories of his day at work and like yes. at the so front line person working in so the great ER during, you know, during health. Yeah. During mm-hmm. the, the pandemic. That I think was beautifully written. Yeah. Because um, the big thing about the pandemic, I mean, the big thing that I think came out of it and the, 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 the yard signs and the banners everywhere about healthcare workers being heroes was really the first time that they were celebrated on a level like that, I feel like. you know, Him talking about how it doesn't even matter. Well, he's just talking about his long hours and not yeah. being and able to eat and losing angry. everybody. Yeah, yeah losing really. people and, and the heartbreak and the, the mental trauma that they go through with that. And that was interesting to me. But yeah, it could be too soon for some people. Mm-hmm. But I also was kind of like, oh, it's interesting to read something fresh and, mm-hmm. and, and current. I liked that about it. It felt very then. current in that way. And Jodi Picoult, people, I mean, will just pick up her book like you probably did, just knowing she writes good books. Yes. So, if you're not ready it to revisit, it won't stop me from reading another Jodi Picoult book. It won't. I, I well, think- and Taylor Jenkins Reid gave her a uh, post on the back of it. Oh, wait, really? I, I yeah. Wait, where am I? Let's see. Uh, Jodi Picoult once again proves she is the master of wading through the darkness to find the light. Wish you were here is a powerfully evocative story of resilience and the triumph of the human spirit. I think that's a great yeah. synopsis. But be be forewarned, it's 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 too soon for some people. <laughs> too soon, and like you said, twists and turns that you might not enjoy. I yeah. think. It, creatively brilliant yeah because i did not see that coming that's the yeah. thing i like surprises and i liked that i felt surprised by it and so when it first happens and you're mm. like oh i, I was excited because like okay but it was did, she actually like yeah she, i see what you're saying eh. without giving anything away i don't want to it was, the twist is the best part of the book i don't want to give it away yeah but when she has the opportunity to go back mm-hmm. And wrap it up. And wrap it up. <laughs> I just wanted there to be more. You want her to tell you what to think. I want her to tell me what to think, but I also want there to be some like hope I that understand. this was. Mm-hmm. I don't want to just come to terms with what the reality is. We're yeah. I'm outside of reality. So what about this? In five years, right? We already we had our little book oh, about this. I, I love really love. I that think one. we all loved this one, right? It made me immediately go find Rebecca Searle and her other yes, books, which yes. is what made us then read the, the dinner, dinner list. list. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. But see, I like this one a lot better than oh, the dinner that list. Oh, everybody. Did. Yeah. But wait, so this one has the twists and turns, right? So she has a dream in in five years. She mm-hmm. now I feel like it's been a minute since we've talked. About I don't this think it's, it's not a. Oh, yes. Yeah, she, it's, it's, a it's a dream. Well, you don't That's know right. what it is, yeah. really, I guess. Yeah. If it's like a hallucination, a dream. You can't really a, figure it out. Yeah. Trans- but so she, her life's on track. It's everything she's ever wanted. Her dream job, uh, being engaged. She's got a plan. Her five-year plan is in motion. And she has 
It's Danny and her best friend Bella, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And she's yeah, she's got the guy, she's got the perfect guy, she's got the whole thing planned and ready to go. But then she has this dream where she thinks that where she sees she where she wakes, wakes up, up. Yeah. In a different apartment. It's not even with a, dream, a different it's ring in five years in the future. Yes. With a different man. or something and he's yeah. in the bathroom or something like that, yeah. right? Different man. Different part of town. Yes. Yeah. And then she kind of changes she shifts the whole like her whole life to try to avoid leaving her boyfriend. Right. She's engaged for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And five years later, she knows the exact date that this guy's coming into her, that that happened. Cause yes. The date, she the sees the date there. on. Yeah. And so like, she what sees would the you date. even call that? It wasn't a dream. It was like, like, almost a, like a flash premonition, like a manifestation of. Yeah. Like, I, 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 yeah I don't yeah. even know what you would well, call it. Well, she wakes it. up. At the, so I think this actually happened in Lost, too. But she like wakes up in this other reality and doesn't know where she is or what's going on. But then she snaps back to the other reality, right? Yeah, she yes. goes to sleep, yeah. So she's like, she can't make sense of the fact that she was actually in this other place with this other man and what this other life was, this alternate universe. But then she goes... Um, like she how just does kinda, her to even go to a therapist? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. for five years, she's trying to make sense of it and she's trying to kind of shake it but also avoid it from happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then when her best friend introduces her to her current boyfriend... She realizes that's the man, right? Mm-hmm. She realizes that's the guy. Mm-hmm. She realizes that... And things start to fall into place. And yes. that five-year plan kind of starts to come around a yeah. little bit. But how can she... Does she avoid it or does she not want to avoid it? But she's got the perfect... In her mind, she's got the perfect life. So, I don't know. It's it. it this one, I think, I was an easy read. I didn't love the way it ended. Did you guys? No. Again, no. just like Again. with your wish you were here. It didn't. It yeah. was. I feel like I, I liked the ending better than I liked <laughs> wish you were here. Yeah. Still, I wanted more. I did too. I wanted it, to know what her next step. It felt step like was. it ended abruptly. Yeah, like yeah, like there was meant to be a sequel that she was going to get to, and something in Just in another five something. years or something. <laughs> yeah. So I, I found this in a romance like list of books, and I don't think it's a romance book. I no. think it's about yeah. friendship and mm-hmm. loyalty and self discovery. I don't think it's a, a romance book. Yeah, but it was. There's really not good. much romance in it at all, no, in no, my opinion. No, yeah. it's, it's about There's sex. <laughs> there's yeah, there's sex. It's about like a soul a, a, a soul tie or yeah. like a soul sister yeah. situation mm-hmm. or um soulmate as a, in a best friend, not as in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But again, I think it's different. It's not your traditional book that I feel like you've read a 10, 20 times before. Right. That story is different in mm-hmm. you. And I think the the dinner list was very different in you. It was. The, it was just a little Oh off. yeah, so the dinner list. <laughs> I was Which not. is also Rebecca Searle, right? Yes. yes. So the premise is who are the five people living or dead that you would, would invite to to, that you would yeah. go to dinner with, which everyone's played that game. And so I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. I, I To me, reading the book, it felt like one of those like writing exercises that you have in like literature class in college. Well, because yeah. like Mitch Album did his the fi- the five, five people, people you meet, meet in heaven. heaven. It yeah. felt like that. Mm-hmm. But it was like that, like, okay, I want you to write a story. And so it's like she took that idea, which I think is great. And she did it in a way that, I didn't see coming. Yes. Yes. So the twist was good. Again, I but- never, guys, I didn't finish it. Oh. I, oh, I, li- good- I listened to it on audio and, and it really lost me. And I found myself drifting off and thinking of other things and missing parts and being like, wait, what? Who, why is Audrey Hepburn there? Hold on. <laughs> what the hell's going on? And like, I missed big chunks of it and it just totally lost me and I never finished it. So I don't even know what the twist That's is. That's fair. Yeah, I'd say start within five years. Yes. If you like it, you can try it. Read in five years for sure. Dinner list, I don't know. That's the only other book of hers that I've read. I won't, Same. Again, I will read more. But you I loved really it. Did you love it? What, dinner list? Yeah. No, I didn't love it. Oh, you it. didn't either? No, I, I pushed through because I have this weird thing of like not being able to leave a book unfinished. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I have to finish it just to like mark it on my Goodreads. Yeah. It's at Midnight Library. I will not finish it. <laughs> oh, I have oh, really? it too. Very, very much stuck on that one. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll take yeah. it off my okay. read list. Well, Angela yeah. got me on Goodreads. So now. Yeah. I'm going to be on Goodreads, Goodreads, but I haven't done it yet. Oh, you have we to do it. We can all share our it's links. So it's addicting. so fun. <laughs> I know it it's really a, is. That's literally how I choose what book I'm going to so read next. tell people what Goodreads is. Goodreads is basically like um, Facebook for readers. Yeah, like you you go on and you choose, you you can look at like different lists. It reminds of me of like, like Open Table. Like you're going to go in and like of. check off what you what you like, what you don't like, where mm-hmm. you want to go, what you like. Yelp. Yelp. Yeah. It's yeah. more like Yelp. It's like Yelp for Yelp books. Yes. For books. Okay. It's Yelp reviews for books. Yes. and ratings. But you can and... go to curated l- lists. I don't know if you guys do that or not. So like if you know somebody enjoys the same books as you, they can put curated lists together and you can go and like look at what other books that they love. So if we oh. post a link for people to go and we can all 
each individually put our Goodreads yeah. up. So if yeah. people are relating more to what you're saying, you yeah. can go to Angel's Absolutely. List or Brooke's List or Melissa's yeah. List. So something came out this morning. I got an email from them, which is like the first time I've gotten an email um, in, as opposed to go to the app. And it was something about a giveaway. And I was like, oh, I want that book or whatever. They're giving away 50 signed copies of something, right? I was like, I clicked on it. But then I saw Angela and it looked like she was live on there. But it's like, she just recommended this and she liked this and she's reading this right now. And da, 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 da. I already kind of knew your stuff because you're the only yeah. other friend I have yeah. on there right now. Yeah. Are you on there yet? Yeah. Okay, we got. Did you? You didn't share your thing. We have to all connect. We need we, to connect. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's really fun to be able it's to be really like, fun. I read this. I did like this. I didn't like this. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, basically, what we're doing here, but so on a bigger saying, level. Join us on Goodreads. Join yeah. us on Goodreads. Yeah, be our yeah. friends. Yeah. It's a great place to track what you read because yeah. I, I think that's what you told me to do. Goodreads for was I was forgetting if I had read a book or not. <laughs> well, and I was and trying to so find that on Reese Witherspoon's. Like I went on her when I was trying to find a book for Costa Rica. I was like going to her uh, because I love when I see a sticker on her book. I, I know I'm going to enjoy that book. Yeah, but her recommendations are great. But then so the website good... was confusing. So she's on Goodreads too. She her is. book club is okay. in Goodreads. Okay. Yeah. So like I host a book club. I don't know if you guys know this or not on my Facebook for my for my blog readers, and it's you know kind of small. But like this book right here is well, from my book club. Tell everybody how to find you. It's Angela Lanter on Facebook, and um, but like it's called the Gorgeous Girls Book Club, and um, it's just we pick a book every month. And but we base it on Goodreads because you can actually host book clubs in Goodreads oh. and like communicate back and forth. And we can like, have a tiny, do that. tiny book yes. club. Goodreads. Yes. Yeah. But like we can update as we're reading and like, oh, my gosh, did you guys get to page yada, yada, yada? What did you think? Like you could do all of that. All I love right. This, this is the only way so I read basically books. basically taking this. our text to Goodreads. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's basically a social media platform yeah. for book nerds. Okay. I like it. You know? Great. I like it. Yeah. Wait, now tell us, so you've read The yes. Girls in the Stilt House. This I is have. what we're all, have you started it? I've started it. I, that's the one I said I couldn't connect with the reader. So I'm going to have to read it instead of yes. listen to I'm it. I'm halfway through. It's very much like Crawdads to me. Yes. And it, it might mm -hmm. be because of A, the location. Mm -hmm. that She's in a swamp. B, it's. Well, she's in the, she's in the bayou and, uh, Crawdads, Crawdads is, is North marsh. Carolina marsh. Yeah. yeah, it feels like the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of situation. Well, yeah. all of Crawdads, I thought I was in Baton Rouge the whole time. Yeah. The entire time, you yeah. feel like, yeah, yeah. And um, it's the isolation, the loneliness. Mm -hmm. yes. It's a young girl who has nobody around. One girl. So, yes, because it says plural on the cover. Okay, so well, you it, get there. Uh, you okay. get there. Oh, okay, I don't okay. want to give it too much away. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, okay. but it, it it really it really centers on the one girl in the stilt house and then another girl comes in to help yes. okay. and yeah I noticed but, something happens with the murder in the very introduction so <laughs> yes yes which crawdads crawdads uh -huh. about thing. a murder yeah. so they're yeah. very there's a lot of like I think in. stilt house is darker so far you know what I read crawdads like two years ago so now yeah. I'm having I'm like I'm gonna have to watch the movie to remember it yeah. I know well it's funny though that's how I know I like that book like honestly talking about some of these like I remember what happens in Addie LaRue but in five years and wish you were here Already the ending forgot. kind of, maybe because it is vague, the endings are vague, they don't stick with me. Crawdads, I still remember like it's crystal clear in my head. And I think that's why the movie's going to be disappointing because that book is so stuck in my head. Every visual like is in love there. For you. Yeah, yeah. I, I really am. I already know I'm going to be disappointed with Crawdads because I didn't, I didn't like casting. So sorry. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, like, and it's just a tough, it's a tough story to tell. Um, it's a very tough story to tell, but I have high expectations because the book is so good. And the author is from um, Thomasville, Georgia, which is where my husband's family's from. And Del so Delia Owens. Delia o Owens. So yeah. So she's in big scandal right now. Is she really? Again. So here's the funny thing. When I read it, I was in, it sounds so bougie. I was in Fiji when I was reading Crawdads. It does sound bougie. That was my, I only read when I'm on vacation. And so I was reading Crawdads and I was so into it. I couldn't even like take my eyes off the book to look at the view. I was so wrapped up in that book. It was until Evelyn Hugo, it was the book I read the fastest mm -hmm. and like was obsessed with and didn't want to like, would stay up all night to read. And, um, I was I was leaving from Fiji. I had to all of a sudden go on a Zambia trip. I was invited on a mission trip with World Vision. So I was going to go to Zambia. And I found out that Delia Owens, before she wrote Crawdads, had been like a writer for African books. She had written The Cry of the Kalahari and something about elephants. And they mainly took place in Zambia, which is where I was going in Africa. So I was like, well, now I got to read these books. But they were kind of dry and a little hard and I never got through them. But she's in a big... Crawdads. You flew through. Oh, God, I flew well, that's through. That's the only novel she ever wrote. It's the only fiction. Yeah. Okay. So okay. the other two were not fiction, but she was a, a, a what do you call it, like animal, um, not activist, but she like worked with animals in Africa prior to becoming this novelist. But she um, apparently was in some kind of a hunt and a man died. Oh, no. And so they don't know who killed him. So there's like Ow. a big, I just saw this on the Today Show. Of course, the same day the Crawdads movie is coming out. 
that she was Yikes. embroiled in some, and they never figured it out. It was 25 years ago, and they don't know who I've killed this about guy. This. It's her and her husband, yeah. and it was their land, I think. Yeah, because they, they, they were big hunters. They were, they had, okay. Yeah, they have a, they have a bush yep. house okay. out there, and so it's this whole, and I'm sure that what happened was some reporter was reporting on the Crawdads movie, and they dug deep into her file and saw that she was like, you know, once. Oh, it was a poacher that got killed, and they were conservationists. Yes, that's the story. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, They're, someone got shot on their land. Yeah. And they don't know who shot them. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So back to Still House. So anyway. Mm-hmm. Yes. Tell us about that one. Yeah. So, I mean, that's really, I hate, I don't want to like run it for you guys because okay. you've, you've I'm read halfway, halfway through. through. Yeah. I'll forget. Okay. But, and like, <laughs> like with the crawdads, y'all, I mean, I knew I had to keep going. And yes. It, I loved it, but it was hard for me to read. So. There is a payoff and like I was dark. happy with I the end. I don't like dark. You're yeah. happy yeah. with the end. Yeah. I'm happy with the end. Okay. Because there is a payoff at the end, in my opinion. Whereas crawdads. I guess I guess I was okay with the way it ended, you know? Like Crawdads is just sad. It's just sad. And I like that though. I need some mix. I I don't want it all to be like romance and love and yeah, flowers. Yeah, no, this is not idea. a romance. Yeah. This is there's no. no there is no romance in the But it's also bad not boy. like a thriller, right? It's just like there's a murder mm, mystery. And all said it's pretty dark. I need it's pretty dark. I, I needed to be forewarned on that one. It in my in my mind, I envision this being much like um fried green tomatoes, that same look. Oh, you know what I mean? Like uh God, I love that movie. I, it's one of my favorites. Watch that again. One, one yeah. of my favorites. I love period pieces though, and like yeah. from like 1915 to like 1965, that's my t- my especially World War II. Well, I so did like hits the that. Invisible Life of Addie LaRue for that reason too, to go back that far to the 17, 1600, like to go back and yeah. think about the differences mm-hmm. in life and yes. what she's seen. This is why I wanted you to make this movie because Addie LaRue. Yes. I know. The costuming. And so, but let's confirm yes. that's becoming a movie. And um, yes. in five years, it's going to be a movie. Addie LaRue is going to be a movie. And then let's talk about the one we all, uh, we all, all, love. all love. That is Seven probably Husbands. my favorite book that, I, that we've read. Yeah. Right? Oh, I think yeah. this might be my favorite book ever. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I am, this book is just, it's so. I good. just read this. I've never read a book so fast. I think I read it in three days. So did you know that Evelyn Hugo was modeled after a mix between Liz Taylor and Ava Gardner? That is was total thing. Really? So okay. here's the thing. I'm about to. Hold on. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, thanks, Brooke. Um, I'm about to work with Rita Moreno. Mm-hmm. And uh, for some reason, West Evelyn Hugo reminds me of mm. Rita Moreno. Which is so funny because mm-hmm. in this book, in Rita Moreno's memoir, which I'm reading right now, listening to on tape, listening to her read it, um, what's interesting is she says when she first met with uh, uh, Louis B. Mayer to get into the studio, she, he said to her right away, oh, this is done. You look like a, a Hispanic uh, Elizabeth Taylor. And so it remind, Evelyn Hugo reminds me of mm-hmm. that, um, which actually going back to Wish You Were Here for a second, did you notice that the woman in it, I mean, it's pretty obvious, but Kito, Kitomo or whatever her name is that she's trying to sell the artwork is, I mean, obviously oh, yeah. it's, uh, it's oh, Yoko Ono. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. Yoko ono. Yeah, it's just mm-hmm. so obvious. But Evelyn Hugo, I mean, when I finished this book, I was like, I need to see these movies that she's been in because it's all about this glamorous um, woman. Where is she originally from? She's not from Puerto Rico. Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. New in New York. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which yes. is so funny because that's where Rita Moreno is. Cuban. Cuban. She's Cuban. 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 Okay. Because yes. Rita Moreno is from Puerto yeah. Rico. Yes. But um, her story is more like Rita Hayworth's story. Like, because Rita Hayworth was actually, um, was she Mexican, I think? And she had to, they had to shave her hairline because she, her hair was too what, bleached. So funny enough, Rita low. Moreno's name comes from Rita Hayworth. Does it she really? She took the name, she was Rosita, but she named herself Rita after Rita Hayworth. Yeah, so, anyway, so just too I many can't remember what Rita Hayworth's real name was, but it was not American at all. Yeah. And um, she was not a redhead. She was had black hair and they had to Americanize her. And so yeah. that's what, that is very much like Rita Hayworth's story, but the the love aspect of like, you know, just being so open to both sexes. To love in general. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ava Gardner. That oh, was Ava Gardner. Really? really? Yes. She was fluid? Yeah. Well, at least now, they, now think. they think she is. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Well, and I loved like the visuals in this, right? Um, like the idea that um, the she was wearing the green dresses. Like you could mm-hmm. just see her on her dark skin and like even the cover mm-hmm. displays that, right? The... The her Hollywood dark elegance. eyebrows with her blonde with her hair. Blonde yeah, hair. her very oh. standout eyebrows. Yeah. And like um, the details of who she was. And then, of course, getting into the many, many, many husbands that she had. I love. Which one was the true love? And The twist was. Oh, I didn't see it coming. 
I didn't yeah. either. I did not see it coming. And that, I feel like I'm I'm in tune to that stuff. I'm agreed. sure you are too. Agreed. Well, like you knew there was a connection coming at some point, but you don't know where the story's going to cross. That was such a great payoff. Mm-hmm. It also felt, even though it was like it was. Elizabeth Elizabeth Taylor, it also felt very Marilyn because I Marilyn so too. struggled so much to find the right love. And you mm-hmm. could just imagine her. So a lot of these husbands come from the fact that she was in Hollywood and that she was forced by the studio to f- like kind of fake these romances, right? To go on yeah. these dates and then to get married for the wrong reasons and to yeah, try marry to, to publicize a movie. A movie. Yeah, maybe and maybe that was very much how it which, was. Yeah, you could see. But then Marilyn, think about the people Marilyn married, right? She married like kind of goofy looking guys that were like daddy figures. Yeah. Like trying to find the guy that would take care. When she did f- marry for, I think what Marilyn thought was love was, you know, it was these guys that would take care of her, these baseball players, these writers. Tell me these... you have daddy issues. Without me, <laughs> you have daddy issues. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, I highlighted some things. You guys talk amongst yourselves while I look for that. I really thought she did a great job of creating, whether it was based on existing Hollywood icons, creating a great character in Evelyn Hugo, oh. who is extremely flawed, but yet you love her and root for her. Mm-hmm. Well, because she I, owns it. Yeah. And I love, yeah, because she has no so remorse, strong. no uh, you know, regrets about uh, her life. Um, but I really liked the fake news stories that uh-huh. were oh, yeah there's the little photo yeah. the little uh like clip outs of different like things variety. about her yes. which i love yeah, yeah. i thought I, those were cute and i found myself constantly choosing who each character was actually modeled after like yeah so you were trying to like oh yeah, yeah. like um oh i can't remember their names now like but rock hudson or something like i was just gonna rock say rock hudson, hudson. there's a definitely de- or uh Mon- monty cliff i thought for sure montgomery oh, cliff because yeah. he was so tortured and tormented and there's just there's just so many characters because I'm such an old Hollywood geek. Like I, yeah, you are. there's nothing that I love more than old Hollywood, <laughs> and I do too. But I'm not as versed in it as you are. I wish oh I was, gosh. especially after reading this. Uh-huh. I, I want to be. I I ended that book and I was like to my husband Matt, I was like, you you have to make this movie. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. care what it takes. This has to be a movie. So and which husband you have to be one? Yeah, of these I know. That's <laughs> who's he gonna play? Well, he should be her long the uh her baby Harry. daddy Harry. Um, That's who I Harry, thought he yeah. would be. He'd be a good Harry. The names were also so classic. Like Although you, the really good looking one that that ended up the first beating one. The her. Ho- yeah, the yeah, but he's, still, yeah, he's gotta be like eighteen for that, right? Aren't they? No, really? no, 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 not uh he was like he was mid- older. Like he was a lot older than her. She was like mid twenties and he oh, was in his thirties. Okay. I was like, I could play that. Yeah, mm-hmm. he could definitely could. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I know I love that too. I'm but like, then I and then so I looked, I'd hate for him to be that role because you hate Well, that and the big yeah, twist is like why why she chooses this writer. So she asked this writer. At a magazine, right? Yeah. This oh, no name, name right? Right. Story. No, no, no. We're not going to okay. get it. Okay. But like she asks this writer to come write her story. She she pretends she's going to do a piece for the um, magazine. For the magazine, mm-hmm. which the editor's all excited about, but she doesn't know why that she wants this junior writer. And it's like Vogue, essentially. Right. Yeah. Or Vanity yeah. Fair. Vanity mm-hmm. Fair, Vogue, something like yeah. that. Yeah. And then she, uh, but then when she's there with Evelyn, she asks her to, um, she asks her to write her memoir mm-hmm. to tell the truth about her life. And so she agrees to that, but she doesn't know. I mean, the whole purpose of it is, like, why does she why want me? Why does she want me? On her side of the story too, like yes. her husband just left. And, and I like, had premonitions on it too, like why she did want her, but I was wrong. I was so me wrong. too. I thought, okay. and I, th- I was going to be mad if it was what the was way I wanted it. I thought it was going to be because she wanted help to end it. Yeah, I thought that she was like somehow her daughter. Oh really? You, oh, I didn't oh, really. See that. I yeah, that. yeah. Well, so. The author in the story, this writer, had written a piece that was referenced in the beginning of the book that addressed kind of a specific Physician, issue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was a very well-received piece, and she'd yeah. gotten a lot of acclaim for it. Really the only thing she was known for. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the thing that she was most proud of as a writer at the time. So, yeah, I kind of thought it was going that direction, yeah. too. And it was a topic that is one of her, uh, Evelyn Hugo's passions. Yes. Is what she thought the connection was, the writer. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's a really interesting, I mean, I have never devoured something so quickly. It was, I mean, maybe Hunger Games, but this was like, I mean, I, I, this is the first book in a while, besides Crawdads, that I've been really into. I couldn't that get I, enough. It was and great. I was so sad when it ended. Like, sometimes I like, wait. I'm like, wait on that yeah. last chapter because I'm like, I'm not ready you, for it. You kind of go through a little like, bit of like letdown, like a yes. PTSD You know what? You like the book like, when you know you like, like, like read every from page. The characters yes. you want to. Yeah. yeah. I literally was like reading everything. And then all of a sudden, I'm literally looking through it. I'm looking at the back cover. I'm thinking about it a little differently now because I've just finished it. And then I realize I see Taylor Jenkins Reid as a New York Times bestselling 
uh, author of seven novels, including Malibu Rising, Daisy Jones and the Six. And I went, are you kidding me? Like, that's why I want So did you do Malibu Rising or no? I haven't done Malibu Rising, but oh, my dad, friend, that one for a it's a very, very good. Years ago, Agreed. my friend told me to listen to Daisy Jones. And I was on a drive from L.A. to Tahoe, listened to the whole book, called my friend halfway through at a gas station stop and was like, oh, my gosh, how come I've never heard of this band? I have to listen to their music. Like, how did I not see them when they were on Letterman or Saturday Night Live? And, you know, how did I not? I, and she's like, Melissa, it's a fiction book. And I was like, it is. No idea. And I felt the same way with this one. Like when, the, And then I felt a little duped by Daisy Jones. Like, yeah. oh, they got me. Yeah. But I was stupid enough not to know it was fiction. Well, she does such a great job with character development. Yes. Like, you feel so connected, not only to Evelyn Hugo, but the writer. Their projects. Their entire, yes. The the movies that she was making, like, you're there. And not to ruin anything, but the car crash scene. The way she sets yeah. that up, yes. the visual of it in my head, I was... So, so that's scarred Martha by Cliff. It. That's his story with Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, Did you know okay. that? Do you know I anything know about that? Martha? She does no. seem to steal a lot of so there, stuff, which makes it more realistic. I the, think the two actors that my husband takes his his most um, inspiration. inspiration from is Paul Newman and Montgomery Clift. Mm. And Montgomery Clift was in a horrible car accident, and he was leaving Liz Taylor's house, and he was tor- horribly tormented because he was closeted. He was closeted, and at that time, you could not. Mm. You no, could not. No. Oh, there okay. was no. And um, our, uh, Liz Taylor got in her car, ran down, and pulled him out of the car and was holding his face together. Oh. Like, it was, this is, like, truly happened. So, like, in that, I'm like, this was taken from history. Mm. Okay. So, like, that's what I mean well, about this Well, there are book. a lot of car crashes back then, right? You got um, uh, Princess James Dean, and James Dean Princess uh, Grace, mm-hmm. right, Grace Kelly. You've got, like, a lot of... People getting in massive, crazy, awful car accidents back then. So that it, mm-hmm. it is very old Hollywood to, to throw that in there and have that as a detail. So, Melissa, I'm yeah. so excited for you. You've been really working hard on getting your immune system up and going really well and getting your body in shape. What's your secret weapon now? Well, I've been using AG1. Do you know AG1? I have heard of this. It's made by Athletic Greens. It's great. It tastes great. Uh, You do a scoop. Oh, no, because I know those veggie things can be not so tasty. This one is pretty yum. Uh, What do you You, like? Put a scoop in your water in the morning and it, oh my gosh, it helps in so many ways. So tell me what it's doing for you. So with one scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced, superfoods, probiotics, all kinds of good stuff, right? It's lifestyle friendly. You can eat it when you're keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, gluten free, all the things. So it's good for me. Yeah, absolutely. And it costs less than $3 a day. So you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than that cold brew habit. And I love this. They're sustainable too for Every purchase, they donate to organizations helping to get nutritious food to kids in need, including No Kid Hungry here in the U.S. That's and, amazing. Yeah, they do like climate neutral certified, all that good stuff. That is amazing. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements to look out for your health. Yeah, and to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash WWB. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash WWB to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank you, Athletic Greens, for supporting What Women Binge. Well, let's... What, what, would, what are we suggesting for the next time around, guys? What is your... Angela, let's start with you. What's your... What's the, what you're reading Paris Apartment right now, I am, right? I'm reading, yeah, I'm I'm only like a quarter, a quarter-ish of the way through this, but have you guys read anything Lucy Foley? I haven't. Yes. What is it? The oh. guest, the guest yes. list is very good. So oh, she no, wait, that's not, it, is yes. that, that's the other one. She wrote the, the guest list too. The guest list. That's she wrote the guest list. list. Guest list. Um, and then she wrote, I've read two of hers because the guest list is on my husband's nightstand right now because I'm like, you have to read this. Mm-hmm. She writes a lot like um, Agatha Christie. So oh, mysteries, thrillers. Yes, but they're they not are. like they're not the kind that's going to give you nightmares because I I really like a light read, but mm-hmm. for some reason I really enjoy her writing. I keep hitting this thing. But they're dark, um, but they're not. Yeah. So guest list. It was a Reese Witherspoon. Pick. Okay. Yeah. I she might have. And then I feel like you. It's very Agatha Christie. You would not forget it. Okay. Like, okay. It's then like I, they're at a lodge and um they're there for a wedding an island and like slowly oh. they're yeah they're on an island they're and they're slowly off. getting picked off one by one just yeah, okay. like um and then there were none. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just like that. Um, so you're recommending this. You like it. 
I, I am not far into this one yet, but I love Paris and I love <laughs> this author. And so I, I'm enjoying it's on the it. list. I'm enjoying it. Well, I yeah. bought it. This is my copy. So it's on my list, too. OK. And I mean, like everyone's a neighbor. Everyone's a suspect. It's like that type of situation. Oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> like a only little, murders. Only murders yes. in the Which building. season two, by the way. Yeah. Great. I've never oh, I watched that. I oh, it's a good one. It. It's fun. It. It's a fun one. I know. Add it to like, your binge guys, list. Can I tell you what we binged? Yes. Really quick. Um, Love on the Spectrum. Oh, I just started. Is it good? I've heard so many people saying they it's love it. It's a reality it's so show, right? Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. I just We're watching started the it. Australian one. Are you watching the U.S. or Australian? Oh, uh, I think it's oh Netflix. I don't know. I, it must be U.S. Okay. I think it's U.S. Yes. Okay. So Australia, when there's two uh, two seasons, and then U.S. There's one season. Oh, okay. Did you guys ever watch Born This Way? Because that was one of our very favorite shows. Yeah. Wait, then I am watching the. I must be watching I the Australian one because there is a second season of it. Born This Way is about the um, young adults in L.A. who all had Down syndrome. Yeah. It was just yes. so sweet. It, it won a ton of Emmys. It was, was really good. Check that out. Yeah. It was Annie. What's your book that you want us all to read? Oh gosh. I don't know. I don't know. I've I'm I've hardly been thinking ahead. Well, what's in I've your been... purse right now? Yeah, okay. I've got a million. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been today? reading the stilt, the girls in the stilt house. Yes. So that's what's been on my list. Yes. So let's see. And I've been doing that one on my phone because I didn't get. I went to buy the girl in the stilt house, and there was no copies available. So it must be that good. Oh. Uh, I need to finish. We need to talk, which is one that you wanted. Oh my gosh, read. I have that one right oh, here. Oh, the push. Did you read the push? Not yet. That one's... It's on my one to woof. read. Woof. It's, Is it? It's... Yeah. It's good. Um, Will Amanda be able to handle it because she's a little bit of a softie? Um, it's just... It's 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 a little bit... Um, It gets in your head. Okay. It's not like gory or anything. It just gets in your head. It reminds okay. me of... um. What's the one that was on Netflix that Amy Adams starred in? Uh, the Woman in the Apartment or... Uh, yeah. Woman in the Window. Oh, yeah. yeah. It feels like Woman in the Window. Okay. Okay. Um, so Malibu Rising yes. and Maybe in Another Life, both Taylor Jenkins read. Oh, I have never even heard. Is that her new one? Maybe in Another Life? Uh, that's a great question. I don't know. It's just on here. I don't know. That might be her new one. Uh, no, it came out in 2015. Hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, One Italian Summer. Did you read that one yet? That's, that's on my list. my list. That's yeah. on my list. Too. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. too. So One Italian Summer. But that's Rebecca Searle. So is yes. it going to be dinner list or is it going to be in five oh, years? Which one is it going to be? Yeah. Well, Dinner List was not nearly as acclaimed as in five years. No. So, and One Italian Summer has good reviews. Uh, I'm going to need you guys to read We Need to Talk. Because I started it. Yeah. This is, or don't even read, I like listening to this one because it is self-help. Man, it's too slow. It's self-help, but put it on. Do you do a, a lot of nonfiction? Um, I like to mix it up a little bit. This one I just really liked because I am working, especially because of this podcast, I'm working on my my communication skills. I've always been someone that like, I always tell my kids before they get on the school bus, be a good listener. And I'm always trying to remind myself to be a good listener because I tend to be a talker and not a listener. And so this really helps. This really helped. And it's got some great science in it too. I've talked about it so much on this podcast, but it talks about like, what happens when you multitask mm-hmm. and just you leave get a, me this copy yes you can yeah, take this i actually okay, just bought you. that so i'll bring it back to you tonight because like <laughs> i said yeah, exactly there you go that's what you're reading tonight but i'm also listening to uh rita moreno on um book on tape uh because i like hearing her spanish accent with some of the, the oh, stuff i she, love it when they read their own yeah her puerto rican her, accent her, with her I love more. so much of this but you know what's funny is i bought the book you couldn't find the paperback um it was the, the hard copy was like $75. So I got the only paperback left, but it was in Spanish. And I was like, well, that's not going to work for me. I don't speak Spanish. But I finally got a copy in English. But um, I'm going to be working with her soon, directing her in a movie I'm so excited about. But um, she I, just fascinating to me. She's a lot like um, Evelyn Hugo to me. So mm-hmm. I, I'm really enjoying her story and how she came to Puerto Rico. Her mother left her her brother behind, her little baby brother. Mm-hmm. Left him in Puerto Rico. She never saw him again. Mm-hmm. As far as I know, I can't wait to meet her and ask her mm-hmm. all about her little brother, Francisco. But um, she uh, just fascinating life, how she became this Hollywood like icon. Mm-hmm. One of the only people to be a P-got. That's Peabody, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony winner. Wow. Oh, yeah. Geez. One of three That's people. Amazing. Never win all those. So. And when did it say the only uh, Hispanic woman to win an Oscar? Yeah. Okay. There you go. The yeah. only Hispanic. She's won. won a, she's won it all. You know, she's done Broadway. She's danced. She sings. And now at 90, she's going to be in a movie I'm doing. I'm like, she That's just worked with amazing. Spielberg. And she's done two other movies coming out this year that are incredible movies. And I'm like. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm excited for you to have a new mentor too, because I know she's just, and she just seems like such a firehouse. Like she just, I mean, I, I 
so I love mixing it up between like some self-help, some fiction, some biographies. So autobiographies, I love it all. I always have one nonfiction and one fiction going at the same time. I like that. Always. Yeah. Just kind of balance it out. It also depending helps on my you mood. not confuse them. Like when you're reading That's Eddie true. LaRue and That's what you're here. <laughs> not me. I'm Give me all the fiction. I want a novel. I need to escape. Yeah. Like I, I, there's a lot of reality. Yeah. What's your, what's your, what do you want to read next? What's Ooh, your, what were, um, the Christie Affair. Oh, Christie. I'm in the oh, I just of read that. that one. Yeah. Yeah. You like it? I did. It was, easy. it was, yeah, yeah. It's it's fine. Sometimes it's sweet, an easy book, you know. You didn't you didn't sell me on it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I gave it a three. I think out of five. Well, she stars. did kind of jump at first, like, oh, I just read that. Yeah. Well, but it's, one, it's Agatha Christie, and it's like exactly my time era that I love. So yeah. That's it. Feels Italian a little hallmarky summer, to me. I'm reading that. I don't know. Oh no. Yeah. No. 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 I like it, oh, but okay. I liked Dinner List. I mean, oh, I think it takes a lot to for me to just d- hate a book. Yeah. 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 So. Well, it, I loved Wish You Were Here, except for the ending. That was as close as I've come to that can be a bummer. hate in a book. Except for The Midnight Library, which I don't understand. You can't finish it. I, 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 I'm stuck on that one, too. I can't. How is it so well-reviewed? It's very popular. We have to push through it, I think. That, I felt that way about that. Um, what's the one that's getting ready All to come out with uh, Elle Fanning? Oh. It's a World War II yes. movie. Um, oh, The Nightingale? I didn't know I, that. You did it. Are you serious? Angela. I love like, all of her like, books. I know. Like, they're holding my hands. hands. They're so Wait, what's, what's the author's name? Um, I, Kristen Hanna. Yeah. I, I will I read anything she writes. I because agree. I love Nightingale. Kristen Hanna. I love that her. That book got me the back Alaskan into reading. One? Oh, Great Alone. Great Alone was that like was incredible. unbelievable. Did you read oh, a Christmas thought, one? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm reading Four Winds right now. Like, Four Winds was amazing. One of my really? top five amazing. ever. It's just, I have a hard copy, so I haven't Four Winds is in my top list. Really? For it's sure. really, really Nightingale, good. okay, so here's why I didn't love it, is because I read a lot of World War II. Yeah. I read yeah. a lot. A lot of historical just, fiction. A lot, I especially World War II. And I just felt like um, there was a lot of missed opportunities with it. Oh, man. I just, I, I, felt, like, I felt like it had been done I before. loved it, I think, because I could feel how cold they were. I could feel the fear about the Germans moving in their house. I could understand, like... I now want a fruit tree outside of my house just in case I'm really, really hungry and need to, like, go get a piece of fruit. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and and that and that difference between the young, passionate sister who wants to go fight in the war and the older sister with kids that's like, I need to just hold down the yes. fort and keep my head down and survive this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I understood the pull of both of those things, um, depending on where you are in your life. And I'd never really read about occupied France before and didn't oh, understand yeah. what that meant until I read that book. Yeah. So I felt like it was very educational, eye-opening, and it felt personal to me. So I really enjoyed it. See, I had just read The Tattooist of Auschwitz. Oh, I haven't. Have you read that? Yet. Yes, very good. Oh, so good. Very good. Have you read that? No. Please read it. That okay. is on That's my list, be... actually. It's, 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 hard. it's a hard read, I mean, because it's about Auschwitz. But coming from that to Nightingale, it was just like, meh. So why don't we the Tattoos of Auschwitz mm. was amazing. Why don't we make a list of four books that we each want to read and for the for everybody out there so that next time around we do this, everyone can have read it with us. Yeah. Should we do that? Yeah. Agreed. Then we want to give away spoilers. Tiny book club? I know. Everybody join Tiny Book Club and then we can all, can we make like a page on Goodreads? I don't know. We'll try. Yeah. No, we'll we can. We'll let you guys know. We can. And we'll okay. do that and we'll, yeah. we'll, that way people can try to read along with us. It does take us a little while to all get on the same page with the same books. Or, or we could do a Facebook page. Time. It doesn't have to be Goodreads. It could be a Facebook page. Okay. You know, whatever. Cool. Yeah. All right. So, so we'll each do pick this. a book and we'll, it'll be our next one. And we'll all read them and everyone at home can. And then we don't have to worry about spoilers for the next book club. Ooh. Tiny book club. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and rate and review and check out these books. Thanks and our friends. friends. Yeah. yeah. Follow our friends yes. on Instagram or Facebook and Goodreads and all the things. Yeah. And thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you guys for joining us here at What Women Binge. Can you do us a favor and give us an Apple podcast review? It helps a lot. Yeah, and while you're at it, you can follow What Women Binge on Instagram. And follow me on Instagram at Amanda WWB. If you like listening to the podcast, you would love seeing it. So you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Melissa Joan Artificial for full episodes, bonus content, and so much more. What Women Binge is produced by Laughagram Studios. Our wonderful theme song was written and produced by my cute husband, Mark Wilkerson. Video production by Matt Giesler and Jay Hawley. Audio by Matt Lott. Production assistant, Jen Best. And she is the best. What Women Binge is distributed by Podcast Heat. For more information, visit podcastheat.com. Do you have a question or a comment or a topic you want to suggest for the show? Well, we are listening. Email us at wwbquestions at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you.